Thank you, Galina, for running us through the techniques as it is happening. And I believe it's kind of an interesting handicraft that's happening um, throughout. And I'm looking forward to another one year of work from you and seeing the results as well. So with that, we will have the next speaker, um, architect Francesco Inani. I think I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. You may forgive me if I... It sounds English, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> I will learn Italian soon. Um, since graduating uh, in architecture from the Milano Polytechnic, he has been devoted all his efforts to lighting, and uh, he founded in 1986 um, Consoline Office in Milano, uh, where he works with Serena Tellini. Their best projects are, to just to highlight, are the Formula One circuit in Shanghai, the lighting for Formula One, the lighting master plan for the Olympic Games in Beijing, uh, the lighting of the National Grand Theater in Beijing as well. Uh, he also co-founded in 1994 the European Lighting Designers Association, and uh, he has been redefining the lighting plan for the historic center and the Museum and Treasure of the Cathedral, and he's working on other projects, including Savatari Chapel and the Iron Crown. Today, he's going to be talking about the Monza Method, a new lighting approach for artworks. And uh, he talks about the emotion, the involvement of the public in an art exhibition illuminated in the way. And I would look at how he's going to present the Monza Method, Francesco. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Spears for the introduction and uh, Andrea, because thanks to Andrea, uh, this is in a very short time. I've been here for the second time in Singapore. I met Andrea in November when I made another presentation in here, and I'm very happy to be here again for tell you this story connecting with the light and connected with the city, uh, Monza, that uh, for many of the people in the world is connected with the Formula One circuit. Um, but very few know that there is also a, a beautiful historical center, a beautiful cathedral with inside uh, a chapels uh, that for definition that of historical of art is uh, after the chapel system, the, the second uh, important uh, affresco, uh, frescoes in Italy. It's about 500 square meters of fresco. And this place is under um, uh, restorations. And we are following and making our research thanks to uh, Gaiani Foundation that give us the possibility to test the lights, a new system in this chapel uh, from eight years now. And next spring in uh, in May, it will be open. So I will start with a movie that has been done uh, in the chapel, uh, where many uh, people connected with the world of the, of the art, of the heritage, uh, give their point of view of uh, our method that we have invented in Monza, in Monza and for this reason it is called the Monza Methods. Shall we start and reduce the light, please? Italy is not only famous for its cuisine, but also for its rich cultural heritage. Italian cuisine is at its best when simple ingredients of the highest quality are processed by an experienced cook. The same is true when it comes to lighting works of art. 
You need the best lighting equipment coupled with the expertise of an outstanding lighting designer to achieve convincing results. Ready-to-serve solutions are as disappointing in the field of lighting design as they are in the kitchen. Il modo di illuminare diventerà sempre di più un modo per aiutare le persone a capire, non solo a guardare, ma a capire. La luce interagisce fisicamente con le opere, interagisce fisicamente con gli organi di percezione degli esseri umani. Vorrei dire che interagisce anche con il quadro culturale, con la precomprensione propria di ogni soggetto umano che incontra quello che noi chiamiamo patrimonio culturale oppure opera d'arte. Perché l'illuminazione è una, ci siamo accorti che l'illuminazione è una componente importantissima per la realizzazione delle opere, che è un'opera capolavoro illuminato male non adeguatamente sicuramente perde una buona parte del suo fascino, mentre l'illuminazione che riuscite a realizzare voi esaltano le qualità del quadro. Il discorso emozionale che, 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 dai, a, che dai alla gente perché si riesce eh, con la luce che voi ne hai fatti a dare le emozioni, che questa è la cosa importante. The, the relationship between us is so open and I must say a thanks to them because this space is a sort of laboratory for us. In this place we have tested many light or new technology that we are applying in different exhibitions. Uh, like in Rome, we're starting here with uh, Bellini test, then with uh, Lotto and the last one with uh, Tiziano. Thanks to them. Sono il direttore dei musei vaticani e sono molto interessato alla illuminazione delle opere d'arte. Sto curando la nuova illuminazione della Cappella Sistina di Michelangelo. Tutto il mondo conosce la Cappella Sistina, illuminazione assolutamente perfetta. I like to have Serena with me now because uh, this is something that not, is not only mine but also divided with her as our life 50 -50, yeah. 50 50 so, <laughs> and uh, uh, the piece that I have on my head here uh, was designed by us when we starting the first test with this kind of technology for the exhibition of uh, Bellini. of Bellini that's using different kind of white uh, following uh, what we have discovered in, in, the, in the painting of this uh, uh, painter. Um, the characteristic of this, uh, of this body is to have two components. Uh, one is a diffuse one, that you can see here. White. White. And, and dimmable, too. And the other uh, is made by spot element that should be uh, directed on the surface to, to see. I can show you a detail of this space, in this case, and we can blend it to component, one wall, L'illuminazione oggettiva io non credo sia utile e non credo esista perché ci sono comunque interazioni con i colori di fondo, con la situazione atmosferica, con le abitudini percettive delle singole persone. Eh, diventa allora più importante studiare collettivamente l'illuminazione giusta per quell'opera lì la singola opera o per, trattandosi di un museo, per quella sala, perché diventa un aiuto per il pubblico a guardare le cose importanti. È chiaro, come tutte le interpretazioni, è un, interpre è un punto di vista che si propone, non deve essere spacciato per la realtà. La luce costituisce un punto di mediazione essenziale. 
especially e now lo, lo, noi lo guardiamo anche nei bambini quando vengono they notice sì. especially in the children è fantastico e loro vedono they dei particolari see some details e, e, e che molte volte i genitori non lo io ho una teoria sulla illuminazione delle opere d'arte we have a theory on the lighting of L'illuminazione non deve mai essere violenta. L'opera d'arte non, non è lo schermo della televisione a colori. It's not the screen of TV. Io ho visto Consul Line di Francesco Iannone lavorare alle mostre delle scuderie del Quirinale, la mostra sul Giambellino, la mostra su Tiziano, la mostra su Lorenzo Lotto cioè mostre dedicate a grandi pittori del rinascimento veneziano. Perché la collaborazione tra il restauratore e l'illuminotecnico, quello che studia le luci, è fondamentale. Perché bisogna trovare un punto di unione che non è sempre così facile, no? no? E quindi bisogna studiarcelo insieme, ma quando alla fine metti a punto un sistema eh, che funziona, è quello che io sento e tu riesci a interpretarmelo per cui ecco è una sorta di sinergia, una sorta di, di, sinergia di feeling che dipende poi da opera d'arte o opera d'arte What do you think? Incredible. <laughs> As incredible? Yes. Yes. Ti convince di meno così? Perché quella parte lì è un po' troppo. Come no, male il personaggio in primo, questo qua di spalle. È un po' in ombra? Sì. Beh, vai, risolto un appuntamento. Molto belli. Lì, lì si vede tutto, sì. Qui c'è bisogno di un intervento di luce. 25, forse 30 anni fa. Sono ancora stabili. Ma convieni che c'è una visibilità diversa? Sì. Ma voglio dire, è, è migliore o meno? Sì, sì. percepiamo molto sì, di più. profondo. E penso che sia molto impossibile, eh, molto difficile, quasi impossibile eh, interpretare quale potesse essere la luce con la quale un pittore ha dipinto. Credo che rimanga sempre un aspetto estremamente soggettivo. Eh, le condizioni stesse di lavoro in cui venivano eseguite queste opere naturalmente erano solo luce naturale. E noi oggi non siamo più in grado di comprendere esattamente qual era questo rapporto tra luce e opera. O tentare di avvicinarci il più possibile a ricreare queste condizioni ottimali, proprio perché il lavoro eh, simultaneo degli storici dell'arte, dei conoscitori di questi, queste opere, e dall'altro la capacità che oggi la tecnologia ci offre. Allora, strada facendo, anch'io sono proprio... 
eh, maturate insieme alle luci. Abbiamo maturato insieme una nuova tecnologia in pratica. Sì. Abbiamo sì. iniziato con delle luci molto fredde perché era tanto buio questa cappella, perché c'era tanto sporco, avevamo bisogno di tanta luce per vedere che cosa avevamo davanti. Il restauro quindi eh, ha origine nella percezione di un valore di un'opera, si sviluppa e si completa con la migliore possibile comprensione del valore dell'opera. In questo senso è un'opera di filologia, ma potremmo dire anche un'opera di comunicazione. Il modo di illuminare un dipinto deve tenere anche conto della maniera in cui questo dipinto è nato. Il San Francesco di Cremona infatti apparentemente sembra un dipinto molto scuro, ma questo perché aveva perduto parte del pigmento originario. Questa illuminazione ci ha permesso di evidenziare nel maniera più adeguata possibile quel che ancora era possibile vedere e quindi un tipo di eh, intervento che oltre a rendere visibile il dipinto riesce anche a recuperare alcuni aspetti della storia del dipinto stesso. I, i grandi pittori veneziani del Rinascimento fanno i loro quadri con la luce colorata, con il colore che si trasforma grazie alla luce. Sono i più grandi luminotecnici del mondo, non hanno bisogno di e quindi la luce deve rispettare la specificità della pittura veneziana. Non deve essere volgare, non deve essere violenta, non deve essere invasiva. Loro hanno dimostrato che è possibile illuminare le opere d'arte in questo modo rispettoso che io amo, che io voglio quando io sono il responsabile delle mostre che si fanno nelle scuderie del Quirinale a Roma e quindi conosco il loro lavoro, lo apprezzo e so che Francesco Gian... Gian... Iannone è conosciuto e apprezzato in mezzo mondo. Grazie per Auguri questo... e buon lavoro. Grazie per questa testimonianza. Ciao. Grazie. Ok, buon morning. Noon. Afternoon. Play part of the day. Last sun and night. These are the two guys of the Fonda from Gaiani Foundation that offer us this big opportunity in Monza to make experiment with light on this. And uh, yes, still today we are working there. And now I tell you the story connected with yeah. yeah this is thanks to the city where we are walking uh, we decided to yes tell this method Monza method uh, I want to tell you that still yesterday when we make light the subject was the, the painting that we're looking on the walls of the museum of the exposition. And uh, the quality of light that we use is, some, uh, is connected with the physics. So the quantity of light, the uniformity, the reflection, we have to take care of the ultraviolet, infrared, you know, that create problem on the painting. Yes, should we reduce a little bit the light, please? More? Uh, but something is changing at the end of this century. Uh, from the point of view of technology, uh, all of you know how the lead uh, have changing our, our life. And, uh, and this offer to the lighting designer, a great opportunity is like to have a sort of alphabet with which we can compose the light. Not only open the light and switch the light or dimming the light as what we do with this old technology, but with LED, I can really create a sort of light that should be at, uh, 
I, I can say uh, the the light at the five o'clock in Honolulu, Honolulu, or the light of uh, the noon in Roma. This can make the, the the technology, but on the other side, also on the side of the neurosciences, there's been great discovering that uh, make us to make a reflection of the way of make lighting. In the neurosciences, we have the discovering of the neuronal brain excitation in front of the artwork, the perception of the color, the connection between the eye and the brain, and the archimetry, how to know, thanks to the light, the different layers of the surface of a painting. So all these components have changed the, the graduatory of how to weight this. And from my point of view, my and Serena, the neurosciences is the number one, then the perception of the color, then the physics, naturally, that are measures that we, we need, and then the archaeometry. So if we're starting with the, with the first point, uh, the question is, together with all this new point of view, I, as lighting designer, I have to change the subject from what I see on the, on, the, on the wall to the brain and the head of the observer. So the subject is completely changed. And uh, neurosciences say that our eye catch the images, but it's our brain that elaborates and interprets it. So we have a, this new approach focused on, on the man of the observer. Thanks to these two big guys, one of these is sitting here today, and I'm very honored to have Samir Zaki with us. And together with Jack Morizzolati, that discovered the neuron mirror, mirror neuron, uh, was candidate for a Nobel. And this changes completely our life as professional in the lighting. And we, as lighting designers, have some questions. If, uh, thanks to the light, we can create, you know, can building an atmosphere for creating in the observer a sort of empathetic relationship. Thanks that uh, the, it should be more excited in front of a piece of art. And the light give us this opportunity. The other important point is that all of us, we have a history and memory in our brain. So when we see a color, we have not an objective idea, concept of the, of the, of the color. The color is completely different if I am born in, uh, in Milano or I am born in uh, Sweden or in Africa or in South Africa, because the, 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 the light during the day changes completely. And this uh, gives me the files of this color in my memory. So when I see a color, this is completely different from everyone. And again, uh, thanks to the light, could we trick the brain to take more time to indulge in observation? Could we facilitate a deeper understanding of the color range? Other point, the quantity. All these data have, are not changed, are important. We have to take into consideration the quantity of light, the uh, lumens, the, uh, the, the technician, the, the quality of the luminous that we use. And other important point is not only the, the, the painting that we are looking, the person that is looking the piece of art, but also the ambience around this. So when we decided to put the lighting on a piece of art, we have not forget the surrounding of this. Because this is accomplishes in the vision of the artwork. And this is another fascinating discipline that is coming out, that is the ar archaeometry. Thanks to this, it's like to have a, a submarine on which I can make a trip under the colors, starting from the surface, still 
down. And thanks to this, I can understand what was the intention of the artist, how it starting, how are the layers of the colors. And thanks to the LED, I can build waves of co for taking all the color he used for a better vision of it. This is amazing. So uh, thanks to this, call the brain before also to work in more color reconstruction and even in the reconstruction of the gradation of the same color. So I don't see the pink, but all to the gradation of the pink, of the green, or the red, of the color used by the artist. In other words, in understanding the nuance of the undertones. All this born, as I tell you before, in this incredible place that is the Museum of the Treasury of uh, the Cathedral of Monza, thanks to the uh, big vision of these two guys, the Gaiani uh, Foundation. And this happened in this special uh, point of the museum because we have two um, assistants, different in eyes, that are using two different kinds of lighting and moving on this painting where the stair is, we discovering that something was different in the perception. And uh, we try to uh, study better this effect and uh, thanks to this, we formulate what I am telling now to you. Uh, what is changing in the past? In the past, we have uh, a dependence from the halogen. So uh, it's a kind of spectrum uh, standard that don't change in the time. Today, I can decide to put more accent on the blue or on the red or on the yellow or where I think should be better. And thanks to the archaeometry, I can go deeper and decide at which kind of spectrum is better for see this surface. These are the 10 points of our method that I like to introduce to you. The first one is that naturally the lighting designer is not the only actor of this action, but in it the collaboration of many peoples, the curators, the museum directors, the organizer of the museum, and, uh, and uh, the people that uh, uh, guide the public in the vision of the museum. So all this give us many information for, for do this. The second point is uh, on, on the side of the technical information, because many times we find on the market beautiful catalog that say uh, incredible things on the performance of the luminars. But many times when we check, uh, this don't work in the same way. So it's very important that the specification should be uh, demonstrated in the reality. Three, discovering the different types of pigment used by the artist in the different sequences, starting uh, from the canvas or from the wood, then the preparation, the drawings, uh, and the different layers of the color, so I can understand where I am. And uh, thanks to the higher, I can uh, understand better the pigment used by the artist. The, the light of the World contest must be under control. If I take, for example, the Leoconte, these beautiful sculptures, I cannot imagine to put this in a pink contest, because probably I need to uh, make a confrontation for uh, curators or don't make this mistake. And the same. Uh, if I take the Primavera of Botticelli, I cannot put this in a, in, a, in a red surround because probably I disturb the vision of the other color of the, of the painting. Another important thing is only high quality LED and specialized accessories. If you look at this man, probably all of you are thinking that he's going to a uh, a wedding or probably a, in a, a 
special evening of dinner. But he's probably is moving for make a ride on the bicycle. So uh, as for the bicycle, we have a dry dress, the same. We have to have the right accessory for uh, using on our luminaires by light. Using different spectra together, as I tell you before, I can draw wings, the spectra that I need for my paintings in a very easy way. And not using only one, but more than one. Use a minimum of three different spectral compositions because it should be useful to underline this spectral composition for uh, make an accent on part of the, of, the, of the painting. Some details can come out better. Plan the angles of the incidence of the light. This is very important for avoid to have disturbing in the vision. The other one, use a different spectrum for the environment. If I'm using a spectrum for the painting, I have to be aware to using another one for all this around. Uh, yes, because what happened in, in the visitor that is looking this, thanks to the new theory of the neurosciences of the neuron, mirror neuron, I have been activated in what I am watching. If I am looking this action represented into the painting, I can leave my brain experience because my neuron uh, make a action like the action that I am looking. And make attention, the last point is that uh, the principal protagonist actor of the vision is the public and not the painting and not the artwork. Thanks to the application of this method that we starting about eight years ago, uh, we go through three um, big exhibitions in the Scuderia di Quilinale in Rome. The first was Lorenzo Lotto, where we apply this kind of uh, different spectrum, um, a different uh, um, uh, tonality of light, and the result was as you are looking here. So we can dedicate for the red, a kind of color, for the blue, another one, working naturally on the historical of art that know very well Lorenzo Lotto. We make the test, in this case for Tiziano, uh, where the painting was located before to moving it into the exhibition space. This is the exhibition of Bellini in the same place, the Scuderia Quirinale. This is Caravaggio in another museum. This is in Monza. Uh, one month ago, uh, we make a workshop with the students and in which we apply this method in a church that uh, has been closed for 14 years. And this was painting forgetting. And thanks to the light, we're discovering what is possible to do. It's just a sort of provocation for uh, starting uh, with the restoration of this church and this beautiful painting. I have time. And this is the last one, is um, the, the exhibition of Tiziano. So all this element I, I, I tell you regarding the environment are very important to take into consideration. But the important thing is that during the exhibition, we decided to have a room of Tiziano 
that was a space that Serena is indicated now, uh, where we building um, a sort of area test on of this for 25 peoples, uh, where we request to compile a questionnaires uh, for testing what is the reaction of the people in the vision of uh, representation of art, a piece of art, under different kind of lighting. We made this with the University of, uh, of Bergamo, with CAP. This was the, uh, the room with the projection of the representation of the opera. This was the opera that we decided to reproduce and uh, make some tests on it. And it's very interesting to see what coming out from this search. We are in the room now. And uh, this is the projection of the reproduction. This is what the visitors see with the different two kinds of light. And these are the results. And the exhibition was held from the 5th of March till the 16th of June for 100 days, 272,000 visitors and 25,680 visitors decided to make a test. So these are the four questions that we did. Observation number one, look at the bell towers that is here in the background. Which of the two lights all of you to see the detail more clearly? And, So this is what coming out. The 70% of the people say that with LED use, see better the details with LED. The second question was, look at the landscape in the background, which of the two lights makes the background seem so far away. And again, the 43% says that the LED is a better vision. The question number three is, watch the colors of the painting. And it was incredible with a, a great contrast with the black, the blue, the red. And this was the answer. And the last one, look at the wall pictures. Which of the two colors make the painting seem more exciting? In this case, the halo win. For a little distance, the 14% decided that this old memory of the candle probably wins. This is a very interesting result because I'm thinking that all the people, 25,680 visitors, decided after two hours, that was the time that the people spent for, uh, for the exhibition, takes other 20 minutes of their times for make this test. Instead to be in Rome and go to see the Colosseum, for instance, or and other things, is very exciting for me, and I'm very happy for this because this is the step for a future thinking about. This is, thanks. <laughs>